All right, let's get this started. Welcome to Intiva's Lunch and Learn for September 2024. I'll be your host again, Ted Brown, Director of Product Management here in Intiva. And today we're going to discover the revolutionary Microsoft Loop, the ultimate tool designed to transform team collaboration like never before. Unleashing creativity and enhancing productivity, Microsoft Loop seamlessly integrates with Microsoft 365, providing an innovative platform that redefines how teams work together. In this webinar, we'll deep dive into features and benefits of this groundbreaking tool and explore its practical applications within professional organizations. While it might, be, might not be today, I believe Microsoft Loop will become your all-in-one solution for seamless teamwork. Get ready to increase your team's workflow and embark on an exciting journey into the future of collaboration. So as I mentioned today, we're gonna to talk about Microsoft Loop. We're gonna get into a bit of like what Microsoft Loop is, go through some features and benefits of Microsoft Loop, show some practical applications of how you can use this application. Gonna do a actual live demo to show how you can easily set this up and put this into use today. And then we'll take a look at the future roadmap of Microsoft Loop. All right, so what is Microsoft Loop? So Microsoft Loop is an innovative tool designed to streamline collaboration within the modern workplace. At its core, Microsoft Loop aims to break down the silos that often hinder teams communications and creativity by offering a unified, flexible workspace, which I'll show in a demo. This enables Teams members to co-create, share, and manage dynamic content more effectively than ever before. Loop defines feature lines that uh, has the ability to integrate seamlessly with Microsoft 365 applications, providing users with a constant, a consistent, and familiar experience across platforms. Whether it's drafting proposals in Word, brainstorming ideas in Teams, or organizing a task in Outlook, Microsoft Loop ensures that your collaborative efforts are interconnected and easily accessible. One of the standout elements of Microsoft Loop is its user-friendly interface, which is designed to adapt to the needs of diverse teams. It supports various content types from text to images to complex data sets, allowing for rich and engaging collaborative experiences. This flexible flexibility makes it an ideal solution for a wide range of professional scenarios from project management to productivity uh, product development to engaging clients, as well as anything else you can actually dream up. The core system of Microsoft Loop are its workspaces, its pages, and its components. And we'll go ahead and look at those in a little bit more detail to kind of explain how this all works. So the first part of Microsoft Loop, I would say, is its workspaces. Now, the workspaces is what I say is it's it's basically its project hub. This is where the project will lie within the um, within Microsoft Loop. This is a um, this offers a place for the teams to collaborate together and progress in type of progress tracking. You also have the ability to select who can access this workspace. So it supports role-based access, ensuring the specific permissions um, that for people in need of access to it should have access to it, protecting the sensitive information that might be within these workplaces. So let me go ahead and show you Microsoft Loop, kind of show you that workplace to show you how you can design this really simple. So let me go ahead and bring up my demo site here. So here I am in Microsoft 365. You have multiple ways to get to Loop. I go ahead and from this um, setup here, I have at the top, just type in Microsoft Loop and it'll bring up the Microsoft Loop program right here. So within this here, you can see you have things on the left-hand side. You have your search, notification, any type of recent workspaces you've been working in. Ideas, this is a workspace just for you. No one else have access to it. These are your ideas to work on. So if maybe you want to put your to-dos, just thought process, what you want to organize your day with, you can go ahead and put it right into the ideas. You have the meeting notes, which is actually, I'll get into this in a little bit uh, later in the demo, but the meeting notes are great because meeting notes within um, uh, any type of calendar invite you can put to have now been switched to loop. So if you actually have loop going within a meeting, all the meetings you have been involved in will show up here in the meetings notes. So you can keep them all organized and know if you had any to do is from there. But this part is to all talk about the workspace. So what you have here, these boards are all, all different workspaces. So you can easily come in here and create a new workspace. Go ahead and click on new workspace. And this is a test. And from this workspace, I can design who is going to have access to this workspace. So I'm going to go ahead and put demo three. And now myself in demo three only have access to this workspace. So this is just a test. This could be for anything. So this could be for maybe a, a project that the two of us are taking a look at, or maybe just want to brainstorm ideas or something along those lines, whatever you can kind of dream up. 
that workspace is designated for that specific component of what you're trying to work on together. So if you had multiple teams, you could have different workspaces within that and all categorized and organized together. So the workspace is the basic concept of Loop to organize your different workflows that you have going on within your business. Now, once you get set up with a workspace, you get into what's called the pages. So the pages are the different components you work within Loop itself. So Loop Pages offer a collaborative canvas. You can have different types of canvases in here for organizing and managing your projects. They support dynamic content and provide a comprehensive space for brainstorming. Additionally, customizable templates help streamline workflows and ensure consistency across your projects. And I definitely recommend when you're getting started with Loop, take a look at the templates they already have created because it can kind of give you ideas of how to utilize the system. So let me jump back over here to my demo site. So we already created this little demo site. I'm going to hit create. So now that I create this, this right here is my workspaces. Now I have different pages within here of what we want to do. So this could be a brainstorming meeting. Brainstorm meeting. And then if I want to have another page come down here, and maybe I want to have in here is going to be called the uh, project kicked off. So you can start typing in here and doing certain things, which is called components, which you get to the next slide. But down here, you have different types of template galleries to create specific things what you want to have on the page. So like I said, if you haven't used Loop, recommend taking a look at some of the templates so you can kind of get some fresh ideas of what it can do. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the template gallery, and it shows me all the different items we have here. So you have your team decisions, project planning, you know, bad idea brainstorming, action hero, stand up, uh, stand up meeting. So let's go ahead and just pick one of these things. I'll go ahead and pick it, use template, and it will already create the page for me. So then it can start putting information within to this page that's part of this workspace. So you can hear stand up meeting, what's the project name, what's the scope of what we're trying to do, some updates. So it's actually giving some information here that we can sign to certain people. Then you have your actions, what you're going to do from this meeting, any type of relevant links. So you can go ahead and try different ones in here. Definitely recommend taking a look at all the different ones they have set up, team decision, project planning, meeting notes, you know, pretty easy stuff that already pre-populates what you're trying to do within a meeting itself. So these are the pages within the workspace of what you're trying to accomplish with your team. Now, the next piece of it is the most important part is what you do within the pages itself. Now, these come down to what's called components, and I'll show you a little demo of that as well. So loop components allow users to create and share in real time collaborative content across all the 365 applications, such as your Teams, your Outlook, your OneNote, they all integrate together with this. Now, the Loop components include a variety of tools designed to enhance the collaborative effect. And among these are your uh, text components, which are enable seamless and real-time editing and commenting. You have table components, which you saw as well when I did some of the templates there, which facilitate organizing data and presenting and collaborating together. You have list components, you have task components, which allow you to actually create tasks that have deliverable dates. Then once you put the name in there and actually the date is delivered, it will sync over your to-dos and outlook. So you're going to remind you as well. So that's how it all synchronized together so you can use one platform that goes across all the elements of 365. You can do voting and polling to kind of see how people are thinking about the meeting or vote on different ideas. So a lot of different things you can do with the components within Microsoft Loop. Now, these are all designed to be intuitive and adaptable, ensuring that the teams can tailor the collaborative experience and the environments to their specific needs that we're trying to get done within the workspace. These loop components can be embedded into various 365 applications, making it easy to share and update information in real time without switching between different platforms. And it's constantly updating, like I was saying. So if one person's into the workspace making changes, whomever's coming back in behind it, see those changes automatically happening in real time. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the components here. So let me jump back over to my demo. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new page. We'll just go ahead and start from blank page. So this is the blank, blank page right here. So the title, this is a test. So once I click down here, you have two options. You can find somebody or this slash. When you do the slash, it gives you all the list of the different components you can have put into Microsoft Loop. So here you go. I talked about you had your table, your checklist, your numbers, your dates. Um, you have different ideas in here for your voting table task list. So we're going to use a component. Let's just call, let's see here, table. And I have a two-column table. So this will be 
ideas. Well, comment between a column, type in ideas, and I need another column. So if you put over here, you can go ahead and put the um, the X, the plus sign, create a new column. So you can easily kind of create things and go forward, make different things happen. Okay, got my ideas table here. Maybe I want to make something else. Go ahead and put a slash in here. Let's see what other options I have. Let's go to voting tables. You can make a voting table so people can vote on different things as they go through for meetings. So you have a really easy way of coming through and collaborating and making something that is simple and easy to use and designed to get the most out of the meeting or the workspace that you're trying to put together with the team you're collaborating with. So I recommend getting here after you play around with the templates of just using a slash button, see what options you have in here to work together to find what needs to happen. Here's your task list. Here's where you can come here and sign different tasks to put to certain people. So I can put this task belongs to demo two. Um, update word, because maybe this is a internal IT or something along those lines. Select the date, this needs to update word by the 28th. So once we hit save here, this person will get a to-do and outlook, letting them know they need to take care of that. And we'll track it all within the system right here. So very collaborative, easy use. Like I said, it's almost like a blank canvas you can put together to kind of design something that is that enables the collaboration together and allows the team to work for one page of pane of glass here, but still be all separate in different rooms potentially along those lines. So those are the main components of Loop. You have your workspaces where you kind of design everything within within the workspace. You have your pages that go along with what the, the overall theme of the workspace. But then the main part of it here is coming down to the components of actually putting in here what's going to be happening within each one of these pages and design it specifically for that task. So some of the benefits of Loop, you know, Loop improves productivity by streamlining workflows with custom templates we just showed and the dynamic content creation. It allows for centralized project management, making it easier to track, manage tasks, and stay organized all from one single platform. Microsoft Loop also provides a flexible canvas for brainstorming, enabling teams to visualize and develop ideas collaboratively. The ability to create and share dynamic content, including text, images, and video, foster creativity, as well as innovation. Now, Microsoft Loop has multiple different ways for practical applications. And one of the applications I think you put into is, is really a, almost a lightweight project management tool. For everyone that joined me last month, we went through the Microsoft Planner, which I would say is a more robust planner tool not as big as Microsoft Project itself. So you have Microsoft Project, which is, you know, if you're ma managing a lot of tasks and a lot of people, Project's definitely the way to go. I'd say Planner is the next mid-level um, planning type tool, project management type tool. But you can get by with doing some project management with Loop itself because it provides, you know, a collaborative, singleized, centralized space for the teams to work on tasks, track progress, progress ma and manage the actual deadlines, manage the deadlines. Teams can create the project plans within the pages and create components such as assigning tasks, monitoring milestones, and ensuring alignment and common goals. So if you're not using Planner, want to actually manage the team a little bit to see how things are going for the common goals and tracking progress, try it in loop together because everyone kind of see what tasks are coming up, see when they're due, and actually tracking the progress when they're completed. Now, the next one I like a lot because this actually works out really well is utilizing loop for team collaboration. Now, by enabling real-time um, co-authoring and seamless integration of Microsoft 365 applications, teams can share all the updates, collaborative on documents, and communicate effectively regardless of their physical location. These are great in team meetings. You can go ahead and put this within teams meeting. Like I mentioned, every single meeting you have now, if you go to notes, creates a loop component. You can go in a loop and have in there of like who said what they're going to do after the meeting. There's Usually you have a meeting because... You're discussing what needs to take place afterwards, and you can put on task and deadlines for it so you can always track so no one can say, hey, I forgot I was assigned this because it will put it into the Microsoft Outlook. The other thing that Microsoft Loop is great for is brainstorming. You know, Microsoft Loop offers a, um, a flexible canvas for brainstorming, allowing teams to visualize and develop ideas collaboratively. This is especially useful for creative teams like marketing, design, and product development, providing a space to explore and refine their concepts. And as I mentioned, you loop and it integrates itself right into meeting management, providing a centralized space for meeting agendas, minutes, action items. It helps teams create uh, meeting notes, assign tasks, and track follow-up actions, ensuring pro pro productivity meetings are clearly defined with outcomes. 
And I'll go ahead and we're gonna do a little demo, but for that, I also wanna show you how this looks within the meeting notes itself. So let me bring over my a meeting I have just been into. So let me bring this up. Let's jump into a meeting. Bring it over here. So here's Teams itself. So I had a, a meeting earlier this week. And so if I go to recap right here, if I click on recap, I can go to notes. Now, if, if people have clicked on those before, to, beforehand when loop was not integrated, it's basically had a free field. You can start typing everything. Everyone type, you know, talked about that meeting. If you had someone that was designed to be a note taker, they put it straight into here. But now notes has been transferred over to being within loop itself. So now it's creating really a workspace and a page here. So now I have an agenda of what this meeting was about, any type of meeting notes and follow-up tasks. And within here, I can easily do the same thing you saw before where I was kind of showing you how to use the components. I hit the slash button and it gives me the different components I had before. So we can actually put it in here to make a design for the meeting itself. So if you're in meetings with people talking about some outcomes that need to occur and give assigning out tasks, highly recommend giving a try with Loop. It's already embedded within the meeting itself within Teams. You can put it in there instantly and actually see how people can get assigned tasks, how you can track progress and understand to see how things are taking place once the meeting ends. Because once it gets done, as I showed you before, all these meetings will come down here. All the meetings you've taken place that have meeting notes will be within your meeting notes within your personal loop. So you can have a list of all the items there that you can go back to very easily without having to go through your calendar to find where when that meeting was, when, when did it take place, who did I meet, do all the searches to find it. You come right into a loop and hit the meeting notes and it'll actually organize it all for you. So with that said, now I kind of want to do a quick little demo about how to really set this up and get it going. So within Loop itself, I showed you, got to go to Microsoft Office. You can get it to Loop either from Teams itself or right from the Microsoft page right here. So I typed in Loop, brought it up. And so what I want to do is I want to create a new workspace. And we're going to create a workspace for a meeting that we're going to have every week. So we do a thing called Level 10 Meetings. It's an effective way to run a, um, a a division or a group of people to have make sure everyone's up to date continuously on everything that's going on within that department. It's a way to track new ideas, to track issues, track rocks and goals, and figure out who needs to actually be communicated with after this meeting. So it's a good way to kind of set up a framework to make sure you can get the most out of your 60 or 90 minutes with your team, to make sure there's actionable um, items taking place afterwards, as well as tracking KPIs all within one meeting. So we're going to call this an L10 test meeting. And part of this group, I'm going to go ahead and invite the members so people can only see this in your invited. So it's all protected by role-based access. So I'm going to go ahead and invite demo three, demo two, demo four. And let's go ahead and invite this Ted Brown guy. And I hit continue. So when I hit continue, this is the L10 meeting platform. I'm going to hit create. So once I hit create, all the people I invited to this will get an email going, hey, welcome to Loop. Here you've invited to L10 workspace. Go ahead and click this button to join. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But that way, then it will create their workspace for L10 within the system itself. So now I'm in the L10 meeting. So I want to go ahead and create an L10 meeting for September 10th already, wow, September 10th. So this is the L10 meeting. So the first part of an L10 meeting is we want to have a, we're gonna do some headlines here. So we're gonna go through and do some headlines. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here and we're just do a table for headlines. So I'm gonna type in L10 meeting headlines. And we're gonna go put in here the headline for the meeting. Going to add in a column. We'll say by, and we'll go ahead and put in here the notes. So the whole purpose of this, once they get this put through, people have the opportunity to come here and put the headlines we want to talk about for this meeting. So this would be pre-populated for this one. So I go ahead and create a new meeting for every month. So if I'm organizing this, I'd create a new uh, meeting um, template for each one of these things, which you can do easily once they get this framework done. Where I would copy this duplicate it and create another one. 
And then from here, people can put their headlines in here. So they can talk about, you know, any new things, Microsoft, new mob product. Um, product. Put in here, um, price increase on M365 E3 or something along those lines, whatever they want to kind of get people knowing about what's going to be occurring that people will not be aware of. So you can kind of have a discussion, let people know broad stroke what's going on, put it right in here, and then they can actually see what's happening. So now we, after we get done doing that. Let's go ahead and we're going to go into um, the scorecard. So now we want to go ahead and build a scorecard. So I'd like to kind of framework this a little bit so we can actually put in here scorecard but you can also come in here and do divider to make it a little bit cleaner so the next piece here is we're going to go ahead and get into scorecard so let's go ahead and put scorecard and for this one as well let's go ahead and put the components and we can also do bullet list number list i think for this one we'll go ahead and probably do another table we'll go ahead and get the uh um let's see here let's do the, the goal KPI. Our goal. Notes. And that's two reasons. So in here, we can go ahead and put what we're KPI we're tracking. So the KPI we're tracking. We can say um, issues reported. And our goal for the week, we want to have in issues less than 10. And this is metric. And notes. And whomever's responsible for filling this out would come in here for that week, put whatever the KPI are tracking of what the actual value is. We'll put this at five, and if there are any notes, and we'll go ahead and add these on down here. So whatever KPIs that your team is kind of living to, put it straight into here so people can see what's going on, and you can see what's going on week over week, so have one centralized place for it. So once we get done with the scorecard L10, we're gonna go right into the rocks. But again, I like to put the divider separated out. So for the rocks, that seems more like a, a task type of thing. So let's go ahead and click a task list. And these now will be the rocks for the quarter. So let's go ahead and rocks for Q3. Um, this will be project name or task name. This will be product XYZ launch. I'm going to sign this. Demo 3 had this one. And the whole goal is to get be done by the quarter. And then you have this bucket of what the tracking is here. So for this one, you have different options to add what's going on with this task itself. So I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of different options for people to choose. I'll say not started. And then another option on track. I'm going to add an off, off track. And then to do doesn't really make sense to me. So I'm going to go ahead and click the pencil button, delete the option, delete. So now I can go ahead and put different items in here. So let's see here, um, product launch, um, marketing material, marketing information for XYZ. We'll sign that to demo. Demo four, select the date, and they can come in here and put the track of what's going on. So I go ahead and keep adding these tasks. Again, these are the rocks they designed for the group itself. So each person would have whatever they're assigned to here. The date is due. They can put in here if it's on track or off track. And now once I have it as a due date, they also have it in their task list within Outlook of when this is due. So there's no question about the fact that it's been assigned, um, assigned to them. So they can come in here to set up if it's uh, if they're missing it, you need to talk about it a little more, but you can have a really easy one quick look, people coming in beforehand to see if things are on track or off of track. So now that we get done with a rock review, we're gonna go into some of the to-dos. So I'm gonna come in here, click this button here, divide, divider again, divides it out. 
And let's go ahead and get to some, some of the to-dos that we've been talking about. I feel this is going to be another task list. So these are all the different items that we talked about maybe last time that we need to get done. So um, set up a meeting with product owner XYZ. Assign that to demo or select the date. Again, change these options. Now, once you change these options for the one time for when we're building out this canvas and this workspace right here or, the, or within this page, as I duplicate it, it will retain this information. So just a little bit set up to do it the first time. But once you get done with that, it will remember it every time once you duplicate the efforts here. So I'll go ahead and just add a couple options. Not started. One more. Add options. Um, completed. I completed on track. And that way people can track or along those. So you can sign the tasks out there that you'd be talking about within the level 10. This would fill out as well and get people responsible for coming in and making sure they put what the bucket is, if it's on track or not. And then you can go ahead and talk about it as a team. Now, when you're talking about with L10 meeting, hopefully this, this whole process has not taken too long because people have gone through ahead of time and populate this information within the workspace, within this page itself. Now, the most of the time spent is going to be within the issues you want to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and divider, and we're going to go ahead and do another component. This will be a table, and this will be some of the issues that need to be discussed within this meeting, which is typically the main point of the L10 meeting is discuss the, all the issues that might be going on to go ahead and create to-dos, create fixes, maybe look at future rocks, and then potentially actually do any type of um, sending out any information to all the other teams and cascading information about. So these will be the issues. We want to talk about the grant and create two columns. You can easily create more columns to make sense to how whatever you're trying to design and talk about within within this page itself. I'm going to go ahead about here, post it by, create another one, priority. And then notes. So now we can have people fill these information out again, pre-meeting. So the issue is um, billing issue for XYZ. Posted by Ted. Priority is a high one. Need to figure it out. So everyone can actually put in the different issues here ahead of time. And now some of these issues might become tasks. So you're talking about a billing issue for Ted priority because something needs to be fixed. I can easily, when this is a meeting, come in here, click at another task, billing issue four, assign it to demo whomever. We're going to go ahead and put a demo three. This needs to be fixed by next week. It's a high priority and it is not started yet because nothing's taking place. We just talked about. So you can quickly go from talking about an issue, creating a task, hitting somebody's actually outlook to show that they have something to do and tracking along those lines all straight from the loop component right here. So very seamless to use, very integrated, very actually, I think, intuitive to kind of put someone through. So now once you get down with the issues, we can go ahead and start figuring out what cascading messages need to take place. So I'm going to hit the divider again. Oh, oh got to label this one. This is issues. And for this one, I think this one works well as a task list. So we want to actually, what do we want to cascade out? Oh, task, yeah. Speed messages. So maybe we just we talk about there's a billing issue. So billing issue announcement. I'm going to assign it to demo three. Select the date of when it needs to be done. We want it to be done by the end of the week. Go ahead and put the to do's here. So go ahead and create the cascading message about what needs to take place. For me, it makes sense as a task. Maybe you want to put it as a to do's or other type of different things within the components itself, what makes sense for you or for the group. You go ahead and easily design from the components itself. So now we got done through all these steps. One of the other pieces of the L10 meeting is, is once you get done, you want to go ahead and rank the meeting. So I'm going to do a divider and we can click this component again. Very easy to do. And there is a voting table. So the voting table, let's go ahead, rate meeting. And 
Usually you rate the meeting from a, a one to a 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and do nine, eight, seven, six, or you can go all the way through if you wanted to. And right here, you can easily come through. Oh, I don't wanna do that. Delete that column, right click, delete that column, delete this column. So it's pretty easy. So the idea rating for the meeting, someone come through here, put the one, 10, vote on what how how they felt the meeting was it collaborative, was effective. You get all the information out of it. And then once the person's running through, they can see who has voted on the actual meeting itself. Easy to use, all run from a single place. People can be in this together. So you're not just going from like just a shared Excel sheet going through it. The everyone during this meeting can be within the loop, within the workspace of the L10 actively working together and talking about the issues in the meeting itself. So I think it's very intuitive, very simple to use, easy to put together. And once you put this together once, which I've done here in about what 10 minutes, I can easily go through and duplicate this. So now I can hit duplicate. I'll create another one. And then I can do my get myself ready for next week's meeting. I can come in here, go ahead and put the 17th clean up some of the headlines because there should be some new messages coming through and people should know to come through and put the information here for what they need to do for the L10, for the scorecard, for the L10 meeting, for the headlines, for the potential open issues. But then also keeps in here the same track list you got going on for the tasks, for your rocks, for your issues that you need to do, the to-dos. So you can keep track of those so they don't get lost in the mix. So all very simple, all from this 10 minutes of work, putting together this framework. And now I have a loop workspace for a group of people to collaborate together to make sure that I have productivity going within my group itself. So I think it's really easy to use. You should definitely give it a try and see what you think with your team. Don't have to start big. You can start small with just an individual meeting, go from there, and then broaden it out as you get used to all the loop components itself. So now that I've shown you the demo, I think it's actually important to know a little bit what's on the roadmap for Microsoft Loop. Now, so over the next year, Microsoft plans to extend Loop's integration with third-party applications, allowing users to incorporate additional tools and services into the collaborative workflows. I think this is one that's very nice because Microsoft is developing a mobile app for Loop, enabling users to access and collaborate on projects from their smartphones, smartphones or tablets. And I believe this will further enhance the flexibility of assessing the platform. And the future updates for Loop also incur, includes some enhancement for security features, such as advanced encryption and compliance tools to ensure that the sensitive information we're talking about is protected and regulatory requirements are, are met. So that, that's pretty much it for Microsoft Loop. Um, I feel that Microsoft Loop is a powerful collaborative tool that offers a range of features and benefits to professional organizations by providing a centralized platform for productivity management, team collaboration, brainstorming, and meeting management, Loop helps teams work more effectively and creatively. With the ongoing updates and future developments on the horizon, while it might not be your go-to tool today, I believe Microsoft Loop is poised to become an essential tool for modern workspaces and will be integrated into your daily routines very soon. Thank you for attending, this me uh, attending the meeting all about Microsoft Loop. I look forward to our future meetings and lunch and learns together. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Bye.